Hello and welcome back to the Survival Bushcraft Shelter. The last couple of occasions I've done wild camping or been out doing an overnighter, it's been on Bodmin Moor and Dartmoor High Ground, but I'm back in my traditional valleys and woodlands, so that feels nice. But um, I do know there's a possibility of rain and I'm debating whether to put a tarp up. You can put a tarp up in the dark, no problem, but it makes it, you know, 50,000 times harder. If you can do everything with daylight, you're better off to do so. So I don't know if I'm going to take a chance. I did kind of want to come down and do a minimal setup for this one. Um, and I'm still debating, but uh, I'm going to start unloading my Bergen and getting camp set up and getting camp ready. Uh, I'll bring you along when I'm pretty much ready to go. Right then, a new piece of kit I've got to try out, although it's not new. It was given to me by a friend um, a couple months ago. Um, I think he was just fed up of seeing me with my old-fashioned uh, gas burners. Um, I'm probably the last person you'll see on YouTube with those old gas burners. So even though this is obviously old and I don't know what brand or what, what it is in that regards it's still a major technological advance for myself i couldn't get a small gas canister so i could only get a large one in my um well hardware store but uh, i have tried it it does work the actual um throttle mechanism is a bit stiff but um i'm probably sure with me using it over time it will actually uh you know loosen up but um yeah for me this is like jumping into the 21st century the old ones did me fine i mean i've had those for as long as i've been doing outdoors activities and um yeah they work really well but um, I've now got myself something that looks like everybody else's on YouTube, not the old fashioned ones. I must admit it does sound like it's pushing out a lot more gas and um, obviously that would mean more heat. You know, I suppose modern technology you know, wouldn't be going in this direction if it didn't actually work. So yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see how quick that can boil me uh, a cup of coffee in a moment. But I'm going to get some wood prep done so I can get a fire. I'm going to run a fire alongside uh, using this one. Quite simply because in locations like this, we've had some heavy downpours over the last 24 hours. But it's pretty much going to be non-existent for fires from here on in through the warmer periods of the year. So this may be the last fire I have in a, well, conifer, pine and, uh, well, commercial woodland really. Um, you know, this will be my last fire, I think. Now I do actually have a pile of wood in there, which is bone dry. Um, obviously the shelter's doing its job. But I'm going to prep a little bit more. I don't have any alcohol with me to stay up late drinking and pondering on life's big questions. But um, a fire will, will be gratefully uh, received when, it, when darkness comes. So as you can see, I've got plenty here on the floor I can cut up.
So I've got my fire lit. I'm going to put oil in my lantern that's hanging up. Get it all done while there's day, well, daylight. And um, I'm going to throw a few uh, target practice shots at that bag with a rabbit stick. Just to keep my hand in. I haven't done it for a few weeks. So I'm not going to you know, label a point and do it you know, endlessly. Try and hit it every time. I'm just going to throw a few shots just to keep my eye and keep my arm in. Muscle memory and all that. And then I want to get a cup of... Um, coffee on the go on the go and i've got my oil lantern which i've got to fill up and get that ready for tonight do everything while there's day what well, daylight don't let it get to the point you're tripping over yourself and trying to do everything by torchlight Right, I've got a target up there. I'm going to try and not hit the tree and shatter this. This is a piece of holly. Um, it's got a fair weighted end and a little bit of an S-bend kink to give it a bit of inertia to get it going. Um, hey, I haven't done this in a little while. Um, I'm about 10, 10 to 15 metres away. So if this was to hit, you know, in a survival situation... A rabbit it would take it out there's enough weight with this to really clonk it Well, I got my coffee and very nice it is too and six times faster I guess than my other gas stoves I'm guessing a lot of you who are into this kind of thing uh, bushcrafting and wild camping would have guessed that anyway but there you go I'm now not going to be disadvantaged by old kit um, with my new gas stove and I'm well chuffed with it my bushcraft knife well um, that's evident from what you would have seen there and i can tell you straight away it's going to be an invaluable tool for me out in the woods and for me when i go and earn some money um harvesting hiking sticks it kind of combines a little bit of what a, a, a small machete and a hatchet can do 
with the benefit of it being a knife on the inside to cut as well. Um, I, I wanted something heavier gauge, but I didn't quite want to go as far as that particular knife in itself. But I'm already thinking to myself, that's going to be invaluable, like I said, when I go harvesting. Uh, if you don't know, I make hiking sticks for an income. So, you know, it's not going to be a wasted effort, me forging that. It's going to become an invaluable tool, like I said, and I can already see that. Um, now, moving forward to this weekend, we're heading to the Bushcraft Show. We're looking forward to it. Me, my wife and my two boys are coming up and um, it's a long, long trek from us, well, for us down here in North Cornwall or the wilds of North Cornwall where we are. And um, yeah, I can sometimes feel a little bit isolated in what I do here because it does feel that most of the scene is pretty much central into the UK and then it peripherates out to the extremities like Scotland, Wales, and further south and down into the southwest and me being on the ass end of um, the UK down here in North Cornwall um, I can feel a long way from the central core of what you see on YouTube as the the scene so but I don't mind um, you know um, but this day and age with social media you know YouTube and and you know the internet you can feel connected that way the only thing i will say is i don't personally don't get a big exposure to kit and equipment i don't really follow the scene online so um it's going to be a massive massive eye opener for me to go there and see what's on offer just by the previews of looking at previous years on uh, YouTube so yeah I'm looking forward to this and quite exciting and I'm sure it's not going to disappoint the wife and kids are coming like I said so this is a family road trip as well so yeah I hope to see uh, some of you guys there and uh, if you see us uh, walking around we'll be in our black folklore hiking stick uh, hoodies we'll, you won't be able to miss us uh, just pop over and say hi it'll be much appreciated and uh, yeah I'm always up for a chat so I'm going to get some tea on I've let my fire die down a bit because um, you know I don't need a roaring fire at the minute I just wanted to get it going while daylight was available so yeah next stop tea tea tonight our eggs from our own chickens yeah that is a blue one as well <laughs> Fried egg butty. And because they're eggs produced by my chickens and my property, the best tasting eggs in the world. Totally gorgeous. The only thing that could be better than this if it was a bacon sandwich. 
Well, I'm going to have a coffee to wash that uh, those egg sandwiches down. They hit the mark, and I'm looking forward to a coffee now. Um, hey, I'm having coffee in a bag. Never let it be said I'm uncultured and not civilised down here. Um, I've never tried it in this fashion before. So, you know, you've always got to be open-minded and try new things. That's what they tell me anyway. So, hey, let's give this a shot. So um, I went on a wild camp up on uh, Dartmoor and it was a really nice wild camp and I think it's only a couple videos back from this one but when I got home the following day I had to have my wife do a full body check and she wasn't too best pleased with having to do that just after she's had breakfast and um, yeah it involved her searching all my cracks and crevices because I was itching and what do you think we found ticks I had about four or five ticks and um, yeah it was down I couldn't reach them so it was down to her to actually extract them so they are out there and uh, we all know they're out there but um, I had my socks up over my trousers while I was hiking because I was pretty savvy I knew there were going to be ticks up there the weather was right the grass was long enough the sheep all the cattle were out and um yeah there were going to be ticks everywhere and guess what they didn't come up through my trousers socks or boots i actually sat down um and i know where i got hit actually but it was a stupid thing to do i sat down and i let my t-shirt ride up when i lay down in the grass um just the other side of the old clapper bridge and um yeah i'm 99 percent sure that's where i got hit because there were sheep droppings and everything around there so um very stupid on my part i do have a friend that uh, suffers from lyme disease and it is, can be disabilitating when he gets an attack so um you know you just hope you don't get hit but just a little warning uh, take care, ticks are out there, and like I said, I've got a friend who does suffer from Lyme's disease from, um, you know, being bitten by a tick. So, take care, and uh, make sure, or make sure you try not to get bitten when you're out doing these little adventures that we do. Well, it's been a very pleasant evening. I've just basically sat here thinking about things and uh, doing a little bit of amateur philosophy. And um, I think it's time for me to get my roll mat, sleeping bag and bivy bag out and do a quick tidy up and a sweep up around here. Make sure I haven't got anything lying around and call it a day. Um, I am feeling tired and I've got an early start tomorrow. So yeah um i'll catch you guys in the morning it's been a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable camp so far the only thing that could spoil this now is if it heavens opened up it absolutely bucketed down and this shelter leaked like a sieve i've got a bit of faith in it and i've got a bit of faith that won't happen but i'll catch you guys in the morning Right, I just thought I'd let you have a quick little look at the setup, and that's basically it. And I'm going to climb in there. So uh, let me just get in a moment. Right, even though uh, I'm in the shelter now, because I'm waiting for the last embers of the uh, 
fire to die down i'll have to stay awake for a little while um but that ain't no big shake so i just lie here looking at the fire when it and i dare say i'll probably drift off um yeah this is me it's in here now i've got about i don't know a foot or more going over the top of me here and I can get further down in it if I need to um yeah if it rains I should stay dry obviously I've got my bivy bag a wood louse um, I've got my bivy bag which is obviously waterproof so that's going to give me some some confidence anyway um I'm going to make sure I get my boots further in here anyway um yeah um uh, like I said earlier I, I'm going to call it a day here and I'll catch you in the morning Well, it's the same sketch for me um basically it's about quarter past five i'm gonna pick up pack up sort my stuff out i'm gonna drink this first but um i switched on the, the phone and had a little whiz around um the internet and i was looking at the news well what really is happening out in that world of ours I, I i'll be blatantly honest with you it makes me sit up and think you know <laughs> it's game over it really is a messed up place the world at the minute and um you know you vote and you hope your vote makes a difference but you know you're left with that sinking feeling that you're just one guy in a ship that's uh sinking fast but um yeah uh i've got uh sticks to do today i've got to get some prep done on them i think uh jamie messaged me i've got a couple customers who want to discuss hiking sticks custom ones so i really get back and make contact with them and um it's looking like our well courier system could change the local post office could actually be taking on the courier we use which will mean i'd only have to go a mile and a half instead of me traveling to the next town and moving on to the village that sits in between that and the next town to uh so that's going to be a game changer for me if that actually is happening but uh yeah i've got a moment of reprieve here in the quiet listening to the woods wake up with a coffee don't switch on your TV and look at the news. <laughs> it's not going to make you feel any better about yourself. Well then, that was another successful uh, bushcraft wild camp at the survival shelter. And it was absolutely glorious. And thanks for coming along with me. I'm making my way out of here now. It didn't rain incidentally, but we do have grey clouds on the horizon. And I've just been told um, I've just sold another hiking stick. So I do have a courier run to do as well on top of everything else that I've got to do. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy day for me when I get out of here. But it's been nice to come here and just get a few moments, you know, to myself and escape the real world and reality. And just just for a fleeting moment, just be here in the woods. Um, my last ones, like I said, were all up on the high ground, so it has been refreshing to get back into the woods to uh, do an overnighter. And incidentally, if you want to see the contrast between um, the highlands to the woodland valleys that I frequent, check on my last two videos where I'm out chasing sunsets and I'm up on Dartmoor. That'll give you a, 
an indication of the range of terrain I cover. So all that's left to be said is take care, stay safe and I hope to catch you guys out on the trail.